in the remote jungles of Guatemala. 7,000 feet above the clouds. You just lean back in your hooks, your belt, and just say, what a great day God's having today. Never have I thought I would climb a pull above clouds. Where progress has been light years away. I had no idea that people actually truly lived this way, that it was this hard. Thirty-two Hoosier linemen challenge gravity, mother nature, and terrain. Offering more than hope, creating more than change, bringing light and power to the people. The spark came straight from the heartland. The belief that one of life's greatest rewards is working hard at work worth doing. But this time, Indiana's rural electric linemen would pay it forward half a world away in the frontier zone of western Guatemala. The Indiana Statewide Association partnered with the NRECA International Foundation, the charitable arm of the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. The foundation specializes in raising money, recruiting volunteers, and organizing trips all over the world to bring power to those in need. Their motto is, electrifying the world one village at a time. This group is the largest group that we've had at one time overseas. It has been a huge endeavor. Guatemala is a country of great beauty and natural wonder, but it is also a country that faces grave challenges. Two out of three Guatemalans live below the extreme poverty line. Guatemala has the fourth highest chronic malnutrition rate in the world. Seventy percent of children in these mountains are malnourished. Their families eking out a subsistence living, growing coffee and corn, in Central America's highest non-volcanic mountain range. Electric power for schools, clinics, homes, businesses has been sporadic, if not non-existent. About in the total population, about 17% without electricity. I'm gonna work you a little bit, I'm gonna let off on this, okay? It took a year of planning, organizing half a million dollars of equipment, manpower, and supplies donated by Indiana's rural electric co-ops. You know, until you come and just look and, and see what's here, you really don't, you can't grasp the size of it and the importance of it and what it's getting done. Stringing 1,200 foot spans of wire across gorges. Roger that, neutral top. Setting poles by hand without paved roads or bucket okay, trucks. We're started down, we're almost. Can you go up more? That pole got exciting. Uh, it was set shallow. We had a gap on this side, four to five inches. Uh, once we got up on top and it shifted on us, so it got pretty hairy for a minute. We got each other's back. We watch out for each other. It's just kind of like brothers. But they know nothing is easy here. Everything is a struggle. All the work takes longer. There are shortages, and working 10-hour days, seven days a week, the Indiana linemen are in a race against time, with twice as much work as they'd anticipated. We continually run out of equipment, run out of supplies. Well, we've had a couple of conditions here where the fog, the guy could be on one pole and he couldn't see the guy on the next pole because of the clouds. We're working in the clouds and the elevation, so um, we've had rain daily, uh, we're working in uh, conditions unlike anything we've ever encountered in any of our lives. I've never once on this trip been disheartened and thought, no, there's no way. It's just throwing the towel, it's just quit and go home. No, never once. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. That's what a lineman has to do. The linemen are humbled by the Guatemalan villagers. The stuff that they did was brutal with carrying the poles 
and digging the holes. They did the hard, the hard stuff. And the trust and respect becomes mutual. Actually, we feel very happy because we know that these people have come to actually work. They are hard workers and they, we have supported them a lot because we can see that they work hard. And if it wouldn't have been for the Guatemala people down here helping us, I guarantee you that project would have never got done. 201, they'll tell you, it's about changing lives. The day the lights come on, that's the beginning of the change that these people are going to see and the quality of life is going to dramatically increase, but it's going to take a lot of time to do it. Years from now uh, is where you'll really see the benefits of what's happening here today. These benefits can be seen on the other side of the country in Playa Grande, where electric member co-ops from Georgia have been volunteering for over 14 years. The electrification has helped us a lot in the proper development of the town. With the cooperatives from Georgia through the NRECA, International Foundation, we receive a lot of support. It's been benefiting enormously the development of the town here. Thank God. Since the introduction of electricity, we've been in service for 24 hours. We can do more with electricity. Thanks to the support of the NRECA, International Foundation, that support has been a great benefit to my community. Through the introduction of power, projects have started moving along. Now the construction of the school that we can see over there, the construction of the school was done through the organization's funds and also the government and help from the community. The project began to work when the power was installed. Better medical care and better schools are just some of the things the people of these mountains can look forward to. But first, they need power. The linemen have only 30 days to defy the odds and accomplish the mission. Stringing 20 miles of wire, electrifying as many as 175 homes, churches, and businesses, and bringing power to more than 1,000 people men, women, and children. We've been waiting 30 years for this. Now we thank God and all of you for making this dream a reality. The people of these mountains grow some of the most desirable coffee in the world. But without electricity, most of the profit goes to the middlemen who have the power to clean, dry, grind, and package the beans for delivery. This is an electrified coffee processing plant. Facilities like this could change the entire economy on the mountain. By hand, it would take a long time. Let's say the sun was good. It would take like five days just to dry the coffee. The power they bring transforms the villages, but the work transforms them. Seeing them kids underneath that light bulb made it all worthwhile. You see their faces and they've never had the power, the electricity like we've had back here. It's just, it's like, man, it is worth it all. It is worth everything, every bug bite I've got, every sliver I've got in my hand is worth it all. And to see that they were pouring everything that they had into thanking us. It was more special than I ever could have ever imagined. To see that gratitude out of people that have so little. Throughout these savage and beautiful mountains, Farmers will earn more to support their families from their coffee bean harvest. Their children will lace up new shoes or play football or practice what the linemen taught them. So now, when darkness falls behind these mountains, the lights come on.
and their future shines more clearly because these linemen helped Hoosiers power the world.